Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's August 24th, 2011, and tonight we're going to learn more about the lab, um, lab spaces, or you'll have to give us more about the title there, Monica. But we've invited Monica Harry, and Monica Harry, listen to me, Hardy, sorry, Monica. We've invited Monica Hardy. <laughs> and Monica's right there with a student. She'll explain. And uh, Chris Sloan is with us. And then, uh, Monica, perhaps you can introduce the other people that you've invited here tonight. Is that sure. fair? Let me throw it to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, on the far left is Amy. And Amy is um, an unschool, unschooling mom. Um, two of her kids graced us with their presence this last year in the lab, and I have learned a ton from Amy, um, particularly about um, mentoring alongside, um, which is really important with self-directed learning. Um, the second one in, you've already introduced, is Chris. Um, Marianne Riley, um, do, why don't you guys just say something about yeah, yourselves? Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, yeah. Pick, say, say your favorite fruit. No. <laughs> Marianne, Marianne, introduce tell yourself about a little your bit. your high school project that you're doing. Oh, she can't hear us. Yeah, Marianne's doing um, an alternative high school project. She's in New Jersey. And uh, um, we connected and um, so many similarities of the things that we're trying to do. Um, Thomas, you want to say a few words? Sure. Um, I'm uh, a, uh, an educator. Uh, pedagogue, uh, interested in uh, researcher, all whatever types of things there, interested in student-directed learning, um, and uh, very, very interested in uh, learning labs, and uh, so um, I respect the work that Monica's been doing, and uh, we've been working together for a little bit now, so. The really interesting thing about Thomas is um, he grew up like 20 minutes from where I'm at in Loveland, Colorado, and but we met on Twitter. And um, the cool thing I think about web connections is it's for passion. And you know, we might have met on the street back then and thought, what the heck, I'm not interested, you know. But now we have studied the same things and very complimentary. I mean, he's very much um, knowledgeable about, um, you know, the education side and has is very well read and um, <laughs> so anyway it's a, it's been a good connection and Amanda's singing so I'll let her go next. Grapefruit, <laughs> by the way. So. Grape. <laughs> his favorite Wait, fruit. His grapefruit. Grape? Not, oh. not by original, but yeah, I have to admit. Nice. Amanda. Amanda. Okay, let's see. I don't think I can say a favorite, but peaches are um, definitely in season right now, and I had a delicious one today. So, um, cool. where, where I live, so I'll go with peaches. Um, I guess I'll introduce myself as a wannabe lifelong learner. So, um, so far, so good. We'll see how the rest of my life goes with that. Um, also interested in... Um, uh, moving into a possibility and um, of learning being something that we all experience as a lot of fun. Amanda's also an incredible artist, as is Marianne. Marianne, I briefly introduced you while you were gone. Oh, okay, I talked good. about your alternative high school, um, but she is an amazing, amazing artist. Do you want to say a little bit more about um, your high school, what, what you've been doing? Sure. Um, I'm trying to plan a high school, really an alternative to high school, um, that is based on um, students' interest. Um, you know, I think the easiest way to say it is it's based on the belief that students, um, adults, everybody wants to learn. And if we have that belief, then a lot of the rules I think we have that govern um, you know, traditional public schools are rules that are based on a belief that um, left to, on their own, you know, children and, and teenagers wouldn't want to learn. So our alternative is based on the belief that everybody wants to learn and does learn. And in fact, you can't help but learn, right? So, um, and so 
it follows passions and interests, curiosities. Um, it um, leverages Web 2.0 um, by connecting. It, you know, we'll seek to connect people or and have people connect with, with with each other. I mean, they'll they'll make those those choices. Um, and and the, the real challenge in all of this is that we're going to do this inside a public school system um, in 2011 when in the United States. I'm, I'm guessing, I didn't hear everybody's introduction, but I, I was assuming everyone was from the United States, but the, I, you know, I might be wrong in that. But if you're in the United States, you know, the, this right. is not necessarily a, a time where um, belief in um, educators, public educators, is very strong by um, you know, people who make a lot of rules. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We're hoping to open it for 2012. Um, we're not sure what the cohort size will be or or any of those. Um, I've tried to take out as many rules and as I can. So there are no grade levels. There's nothing like that. But there is, um, students do in New Jersey have to earn 120 credits. And those credits now can be divorced from seat time. I just have to demonstrate how they are. So that, that's where we are. That's what we're up to. Kind of exciting. And um, that's it. Just Mary I'm very excited. I would give a plug for your YouTube video, too, because I thought that was a really great thing to watch and to get a sense of uh, your program and the work you're doing. Thanks. Yeah, it would be and great fun. Could, thank you, Marianne. If I could go back to Amy, because she's, and I'll, I'll end with Christian, but Amy's the only one that I completely spoke for, and she's taught me not to do that for other people. So, <laughs> Amy, do you want to say anything? Um, I don't know. I guess I would say that, like, I came to this after having a lot of education, like graduate level education in neuroscience and psychology, and um, I actually studied learning and memory in graduate school. I did that. I wasn't going to subject my kids to public school, and so here we are. <laughs> and I'm really, really excited to be um, a part of the lab. I think what you guys are doing is just awesome. And thank you, Amy. And then Christian, do you want to say anything? Uh, Introduce yourself, Christian. My, my name is Christian. And uh, I don't know. I, I like to play soccer a lot. I guess you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's. You can ask us later. That's good. Christian, Christian, Christian. I just want to say my favorite student. Oh, my favorite student last year uh, has your name as well, Christian. And he's now studying at uh, Hunter College. He's studying um, Chinese and environmentalism. He's going to try to figure that out. Anyway, <laughs> great name you have there. I don't Welcome. know if any of you guys have read. Um, well, actually, wait a second. Rob, yay, you're here. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Hey, Rob. Um, hold me a um, I am a teacher in San Diego at a progressive school. Um, and uh, likewise, uh, very much on the de-schooling, unschooling set at home with, with my own two who have uh, um, So I kind of live both those lives. So. so are you a teacher or a learner? Both. You're right. Question of the day. <laughs> That's right. I've been reading too many back to school emails <laughs> referring to me as the wrong thing. The title is <laughs> coming right. out true color. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So, Monica, there was a comment in the chat room that somebody's Christian. not sure what our topic is. Do you maybe want to introduce what we're going to be talking about tonight briefly? What is lab? Just to kind of um, set us yeah, up now I'm that we're all sure introduced. That, but I would like to. Okay. Go ahead. I would like to preface it with, um, we'd kind of like to share like what it's like. We all got together on um, hang when Hangout started. We had been connected by um, projects we were doing, and um, you know, just found a lot of people that were doing similar things. And so, kind of wanted to share what maybe a work session would look like. Um, 
But sure. we started the lab. Um, kids wrote up a four-year plan of disruption, uh, according to Clay Christensen's definition. And it's a quiet revolution in that um, it's not a cell like um, John Hagel's power of pull. It's, 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 a, it's a pull. It's an allure. It's um, being and other people falling in love and joining in if they want. And one of the premises is that nothing is for everyone and that we feel like a lot of the great resources, especially people, are within the school system. So there's a little bit of difference. It's, you know, in what we're doing, trying to make this happen, or not make it happen, but um, have this quiet revolution occur within the public school system, a people agenda. So um, we have, until my laptop broke and I lost web connection, we were getting together on Mondays and um, talking about having work sessions and talking about what can we do, rather than just getting together to theorize mm -hmm. and um, make some action happen. Um, some of the things that have come out of that that wouldn't have come out if these guys didn't come already doing amazing things. Um, Alex is another huge player who started our school, H-O-U-R, um, which fits perfectly with our interdependency, where we want to match people in the city for passion. Um, and, and that's what our school is doing. They just came out about three weeks ago, beta. Um, so we really just we want to start... Um, sharing how other people can create these lab spaces, these spaces of permission to be and to learn um, for choice. Uh, strong convictions that um, if learning is going to truly happen, intellectual learning, pure curiosity, it needs to be non-compulsory. And so we feel really responsible. We feel like we all have great opportunities happening with us, um, but we feel really responsible to um, make that an equity situation for the, the nation and globally as well. So we want to share some of the things that we're doing in a more edible way. Um, one of the things that um, I, I've just done with the lab here is um, we're writing a short book of exactly what we're doing. Um, the process of learning we're using, we're calling detox, detoxification from this um, rules, society, um, reliability, thinking people. Um, that quite honestly, a lot of the time we become mindless because we're so set on outcomes. So our purpose in gathering is to be gracefully bold in saying, what the heck, let's move on. <laughs> How's that sound, guys? <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yes. So, so, uh, well, well, Anybody else? I think I think one of the unique uh, parts of of our um, confluence and also the the hangouts and uh, is the fact that each each one of us in some way has been very interested in the theories of of, of unschooling and the application of unschooling um, design of spaces where unschooling might might happen but uh, also trend at least the group that is here to not uh, be interested in this sort of antagonistic uh, reform rhetoric or even praxis that seems to be really uh, commonplace today in education. And so um, what draws me to the group is that everybody, for the most part, that is, that is in uh, that group that Monica was just talking about are actually involved in the day-to-day -day work of, of uh, you know, working with learners and in learning communities and affecting amazing change uh, that way and then we're able to um, you know spin off Rob and I have worked in multiple settings together um, where we've both been uh, you know uh, with our with communities of learners sometimes 15 to 20 years difference in age um, but still coming together and being able to allow um, you know uh, learning to, to just flourish outside of the common borders uh, that I think most educational uh, institutions share and then just I don't mean to keep going but one of the things about Monica that I think is just in the lab that's been so uh, enlightening to me and I, and I and definitely with Marianne as well um, is that these spaces are happening within traditional public school districts um, and that is uh, I think groundbreaking and um, very fascinating it's you know not the charter 
um, antagonism, but this is these are spaces that are ubiquitous learning hubs happening uh, in uh, traditional school districts. So, Monica, can you explain a little more about like who is sponsoring Lab and you know who gave you permission to go ahead and do this? <laughs> One way to think about it. Um. Actually, the way it came about was um, just listening to kids, and I don't think we do that enough. I don't think we – this is one thing Amy and I have talked a lot about, um, and Mary Ann is like our expert on rhizomatic learning and rhizomatic communities. Um, we don't listen enough, and we – being a math teacher for so many years, I could tell, you know, they would get it enough for the test and stuff, but – are they really getting it? Um, and even asking the kids, they they come up with a number, 75%, they believe, are either cheating or um, cramming the night before the test. So mm -hmm. when we talk about what's legit, what's risky and what's not, to me, it's, a, it's much more risky to leave it as is, you know. So a boldness started coming out of listening to them and finding out that we're, we're wasting kids, not all of them. I mean, there's some that love school, and we don't want to mess with that. Um, but we're wasting kids it's like they're in holding places. And um, so I would just be saying, okay, what do you want to do? You know, let's facilitate what you want to do. And then they would do amazing things if they believed that I really wanted to know what they really wanted to do. And then we would take that to, you know, superintendent and say, look at this. Isn't this cool? Can we do more? Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's been more of my Twitter support. Knowing, I mean, look at the crazy girl there. I can't feel crazy when I'm watching her dance around. And um, finding out that people like Thomas. She's just dancing the with the guy thing. behind you, by the way. The guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, um, uh, here's, a, here's an example. You know, I could have, we could have folded several times um, because it, mm -hmm. it hasn't been just, you know, glitz and easy. But every time something happens, um, if the kids are learning something just from the raw, and it's a book that I just read, and it's like, what the heck? You just you just quoted three of the books I just read, and it just came from you. Um, Thomas just introduced me. I mean, I'd heard of Ivan Elick, but I'd never read him. And Thomas is like, what? You haven't read him? And so I'm just about done with that, and I'm like, why have I not read of this man before? And and that's so confirming that, and that's exactly what learning should be. It shouldn't be come Thursday and we're going to tell you what you're going to learn. It should be you've experienced it, and then when you learn more, you just can't stop. You know, you're okay. just so hungry for it. Um, I, so I think just because we've had a little bit of permission, boldly, mm -hmm. um, and then they've done a, amazing things, we've just gotten more permission. So how do kids, kids, how how do kids, how do kids end up at lab? <laughs> Say that again? How do kids end up at lab? The students. Um, How do they come choice. to lab? They can now that we've moved downtown, uh, they get a ride, or they can bike, or their parent can bring them. Yeah. You want to hear my story? Yeah, go ahead, Christian. That'd be good. When when they all started, uh, you know, I was just. I was just chilling. I was just chilling in this in this room, in this classroom, pull a computer and I was just trying to do some homework. And then Miss Hardy comes up and she asks me if I wanted to make a Spanish class because all my friends know that I can speak Spanish fluently. And I guess they were trying to make like a Spanish class and trying to make it. And, so I, and then she came in and she said, "You want to make a Spanish class?" And I was like, "Yeah." I want to make a Spanish four class. And then she's like, no, you can't do that. And then I was like, wait, what? You just said I could. And then, like, slowly she tried telling me that I needed to invent my own Spanish class. And then, like, I started at Spanish, and I started noticing how amazing, like, the innovation thing was and all the things that you could actually do and how, like, there's actually people out here helping you do for passion. And then I moved on to soccer, and then on to video, and then I tried learning Portuguese, and it was just a bunch of crazy stuff. I'm just, I'm just jumping around. 
the funny, and that's what he needs to do. I mean, that would be nice if we would have let him continue that as a six-year-old. What imagine, you know, what he would be now. But that's that's the space of permission that, you know, if we want these spaces, we've got to guard that, and they're going to look like they're doing nothing. But I started to say, have any of you guys read Jakob Hecht's um, um, Democratic Education? He talks about a guy playing soccer for three years, and that's all he did. And his parents were freaking out, and every year he would convince them that something's happening. Well, finally, after three years, he left, and Yakov told him, you, you just need to know that wherever he goes, he's going to be successful. And the end of the story is he was extremely successful. Well, when I was reading that book, it was like I had experienced that. You know, other people are going, what the heck are you having those kids do? Well, they needed that time to believe that we really just wanted to know them, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. One of his favorite videos, I don't know if you've seen it, is where um, kids in Taiwan wanted to, was it in Taiwan, they wanted to play soccer? Oh yeah, it's great. The, the city was laughing, yeah. not laughing at him, but they didn't believe him and they built a soccer field on the water and that's really what these guys have done and um, you can't, you can't really argue with that. The funny thing about when I was asking him in the beginning, we really haven't approached anybody. It's been more of a, if you've heard about it and you want to be a part of it, it's kind of like an informal interview with the other kids or with me to see if they really have a drive or if they're trying to escape from something because they've got to have a passion and they want to, they, they have to want to give back. So I was asking Christian if what he would do if he was going to create a Spanish class. And he had had an experience where they, he got, came in as a ninth grader, had him in Spanish one. Nope, he's too good. You know, put him in Spanish two. Nope, he's too good. Put him in Spanish three. Um, and then I don't know if he went to Spanish four, but then I think they tried French. <laughs> and, and so I was saying, what would you do if you created the class? And so he was saying, I want to do Spanish four. And I'm saying, no, you get to create it. And so he's like, okay, Spanish three. It was like he was trying to tell me the answers he thought I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And so finally, after 30 minutes, he gets... Well, I, I get it. And then he's telling me all this incredible stuff about where the best dialects are and if I want to do this. I mean, he knew all this. So That didn't answer your question, but that's okay. No, that's fine. what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation, right? Yeah. I want to invite answer. other people. What are you thinking? What are, what's on your mind right now? <laughs> what do we want to get done I'm, here I'm together? Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about what Mary Ann's been uh, piping out a lot over the summer is her son's uh, experience with Minecraft because I've been I've been seeing a lot of similar stuff with my kids at home. Oh, my son got into Minecraft. They've actually kind of spent more time in that game Glitch. I don't know if you've seen it. It's from um, mm -hmm. one of the creators of Flickr. Um, it's right now in beta testing, and and they've just been having a swell time with that. Um, in fact, the other day. You know, they started, they're opening a restaurant in the game. I, I don't know exactly what that means with the kids, but uh, <laughs> they're, you know, mining resources and things like that. And, and they wanted to be able to write up a menu and then a sign. But in the game, to be able to make things like that, you have to have built up a skill called penmanship or something like that. And since it, it's, it's really just this um, economy, and so they had to hire somebody to do it. And so they went out and they found somebody to do it and paid them a certain amount. And now they're, I guess just before we left the house, they were um, posting a sign, help wanted for, for the, the restaurant, things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and these are mostly with people who are in their 20s and 30s. These are not, um, you know, they're not necessarily interacting with kids their age, and they happen to be 10 and 12 at this point. But um, mm -hmm. I, know, I don't know. That, that, Marianne, I, I love hearing about what's going on with Minecraft and her son because he's, he's – got these technical aspects too. Yeah, it's pretty amazing the whole idea that we organize schools by age and yet um, you know Rob I'm seeing the same thing my son's interacting at first I, I'm just to be honest with you I was a little freaked at first because I'd be saying to him so how old is this person <laughs> and then I, I realized that you know that's me bringing things that I've been taught for a long long time and um, so, so we've stopped really asking that question, but the, the learning, like um, he and a, a boy in Canada are just completing the Colosseum. They have built it um, 
in Minecraft and they've built it from pictures in which they look at very different angles. Now I'd like to, you know, I think it's kind of also probably important to know my son in, in, is in a traditional, you know, public school. He is not a, a kid who anyone would describe in school as a high flyer at all. He, you know, we're just hoping he'll stay there for a little bit to high school is ready um, because he's finding it terribly boring. In, in contrast, the learning that's happening in the Minecraft play is, I'm going to just say, is, is more extraordinary than I ever imagined. Um, the reading, the writing, the composing, the figuring things out, the working with people from across the globe. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, we talk about global citizens and, and yet we make kids sit in a classroom by themselves. You know, it, it, the, the world is already there in, in many ways, um, that kids can tap into. And, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I will tell you the researcher in me wants to, um, just pick up a pen and make notes all the time. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A quick note about Minecraft, you know, my, my son's been going into uh, an open server, right? And and so he's got no control of what's going on there, who comes in and who comes out. And at one point, you know, he was a little bit frustrated or whatever about um, people maybe breaking things that he was building and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I said, well, why don't you just, you know, create your own server or, you know, work in a place where nobody else is going to show up? And he says, well, oh, that wouldn't be any fun because then there wouldn't be anybody there. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the whole point of, uh, you know, and we hear all this talk about how, how uh, technology can be alienating and things like that, but really, I mean, he, he's there because there's that interaction um, that, that he gets um, mm -hmm. from it. And sure, there are moments where it's helpful to, to be able to just, you know, dive in and do his thing in terms of building it. Maybe, I mean, our time zone is kind of funky that way, where I think, I, I notice this like even on things like Twitter, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's this kind of lull that happens on the, you know, when, when we get home from the pool late and, uh, you know, the East Coast is asleep and, you know, things aren't firing up necessarily anywhere else, or maybe they're in the middle of the day and not in that sort of game environment. Um, so he still has those moments where he has to figure out things on his own, um, but he lives for those other moments where, you know, he's interacting with all these other people. Yeah. You may, Rob, I'm laughing because in my home this summer, we called it London time because <laughs> my son was up at five in the morning in order to interact with three kids from London as they were building things. So, um, you know, you, you may be on Eastern uh, Standard Time uh, as well soon. Yeah. Marianne, you don't have to be have a, a the only one to answer this. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, yeah um, well, I teach in a traditional school, um, but, you know, we have a lot of freedom where I am. Um, and there's some questions in the chat room about how, um, you know, to ask those practical questions, you know, how you interact with those, uh, you know, the traditional schooling system that you have. You know, for instance, is this, I know there are a lot of different variations, is this more analogous to like homeschooling than it is to like a charter school or just run the spectrum? Well, if you're asking, we've got different people here coming together to do one mission. To, to one of the, Our main mission for this Hangout group is to eradicate standardization, state time, part of the unit. And so we're trying to come up with means to do that. The plan of this, that the kids wrote up um, two years ago, um, part of that is um, – the innovation lab that we're doing right now and the innovation lab at this point is really about self-directed learning so it's very similar to de-schooling or unschooling but the best actually the end of the four years has the city as the floor plan and the high school buildings are resource centers so it so when you ask is it is it a mix yeah it's very eclectic it's you, you design it. You choose, I mean, some when we were doing the research with kids a couple years ago, every kid had a different answer, and they were almost opposite answers, even to the to the teachers. I love that teacher. I hate that teacher. I love lecture. I hate lecture. And so, um, and so, um, the answer for, for I think all of us actually, because we want to do it within the system, is we're not saying we're just saying there needs to be more options. We need to quit defining normal as that small little percentage 
that do school math and that do school writing. I am a mathematician. I love mathematical thinking. Um, mathematical thinking is natural, like Mary Ann alluded to before. Um, so much of what we want from kids is natural. School math is not natural. You don't need to, everybody doesn't need to know how to rationalize a denominator. And everybody doesn't need to know how to do, you know, you know things with imaginary numbers. So the, the fact that we're forcing everyone to do that and they're missing out on time, they could be showing their brilliance. Amy, do you want to say anything? Um, regarding, I, I don't know, I, I think the thing that allures me about the program is that you have the idea of connecting with resources we already have in the community, rather than trying to, you know, recreate all these wheels. I think that's smart. There are people out there who want to share their passion, so why not use it? Our biggest mistake last year was um, we thought, and it was my fault because I had had a virtual mentor for six months. It was amazing. And so I thought we could just go on those virtual mentors. Well, when you're in the school system, Skype doesn't always work. The time zone is, is off sometimes. So this year we're going one-to-one face-to-face mentors. And one of we've got a room now in this house that we have that we're meeting in. Um, and it's going to be like a virtual tour room. You can see what we're the, the whole plan laid out, like on the walls. Well, on one wall, we're going to have magnetic business cards and kids' names so that people can come in and say, oh, this girl who's been unschooled is now connected to this lady across the street who is the translator for Japanese, and she's teaching her Japanese. This guy right here who's in the system who wants to build a homeless shelter is connected to this guy down the block who is a lawyer that's also on the board for a homeless shelter. And so the resources, we're blown away. We're like, what the heck? People live in our city and we're reading books, <laughs> you know. And so, I mean, I, I guess I would, I would add to as far as the standards question is concerned that, um, you know, I've worked with schools and, and in schools both that, that require um, some sort of uh, standardized testing. And I think that what we're seeing in, in some movements and some wonderful schools right now, including a school that Rob has been involved with and I've been involved with called the uh, Cornerstone School, is that you have ubiquitous learning happening within, um, you know, a building outside of a building they're fully in, intending to deliver standardized assessments, um, but they're not geared towards any sort of rote curricular structure. It's all student-driven, project-based learning. And that, uh, to that extreme, may not be as, as common, but it's certainly um, happening uh, in schools where students are not going to regular classes. They're still uh, needing to take, at times, these standardized tests. And I know Rob can speak to, to his school to a, uh, a bit if you want to, Rob, I don't know, but, um, you know, about how students that are, and Rob, by the way, let me just, just pump Rob up for a minute here because he deserves it so much, um, runs an amazing uh, integrative program where, st I've seen it, where students are, are in charge of their learning, uh, they're fluent learners, um, and they're excited, they're passionate about learning. Um, and again, from what I've heard, uh, they test okay. I mean, it's not something that that needs to be, uh, you know, to be fussed about quite so much. But yeah. So, Rob, what's that look like? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're a progressive school. I mean, the school way, and um, and basically, we rolled out a new middle school over the past uh, few years. So, the school had traditionally gone through sixth grade. Sometimes there was a sixth grade. Sometimes there weren't, depending on. Um, how many students stuck around for that. And and um, before I had arrived, the school had made the decision to then um, add through the eighth grade. So we had our first set of eighth graders graduate last year. Um, and basically, uh, I mean, we do have a curricular shell, uh, you know, a basic theme for humanities and for math science any given year, um, and then leave the kids to decide how they want to explore that, that basic theme. Um, and we, you know, there are, there are ongoing issues about, uh, and I think this gets back to the question about how do you integrate or how do you interface with, with another institution. Um, I think in terms of college universities, you know, there's so much, 
out there, and then geography is not as much of an issue. Obviously, you know, there's more cost involved with going somewhere else uh, away from home. Um, but in terms of high school, no, you don't necessarily have that choice. So there are some interface issues that take place in terms of um, if there isn't a school that is like ours, um, for them to make a natural progression from the middle school to a high school. Um, we have uh, high, tech high Tech High here in San Diego, which is a good fit, but it's a lottery. So that's not something that any of those parents can um, count on as the next step if that's what they want. So we have students who apply to other local independent schools, all of which are, you know, pretty traditional. Um, some, you know, a little bit more progressively inclined, I guess, than others. Um, and that is something that is always concerned by parents. We're constantly um, working with them and talking to them about that. Uh, testing does come up all the time. Um, uh, traditionally, the school has had a, um, a, a standardized test that it's given us uh, a membership requirement in the California Association of Independent Schools. So um, that was, decision was made a long time ago, and that's an ongoing conversation that we're having now that uh, the CIS has, has no longer um, decided that's a necessary requirement for member schools. So I, I can't say if it's going to go away tomorrow or a few years or, or if the standardized test is the ERB um, that, that um, the kids take. Um, in fact, last year our eighth graders didn't take it. So many of them were taking uh, the, the independent school entrance exam that it didn't make for any sense for them to take yet another test. Um, and uh, for us, we, we decided it wasn't necessary for them to take another test. Um, but can, how can I tell you that, you know, what is that transition going to look like? Well, we've, our graduates are now starting last week, this week, next week, they're starting in their high schools. And we'll see exactly how that transition works out. Um, they all found a school to go to that they wanted to go to. Um, and uh, that the admissions process wasn't necessary. We actually held uh, a... Um, this is something that we got from urban school in San Francisco, kind of a uh, phantom transcript, if you will, um, that we didn't even refer to or think about or anything like that um, in the background because some parents were so concerned that, you know, they're going to be admissions departments uh, that, that would not accept the transcript without grades. We didn't send those out to anybody. Um, they're going to disappear. Um, so, uh, the admission process wasn't a problem. Now, does that mean that everybody tests uh, incredibly well? I wouldn't say that's the case. Um, but I think we have a program that is definitely more accommodating to, especially within the independent schools um, that I've, I've experienced, it's, it's much more accommodating to a wide range of learners. Right? You, you have some people who are just not good test takers. I, I mean, I can think of some students who, you know, the test is just painful, but they're some of the most brilliant people I've known. I know. Um, so I think what we, we're able to do is we're all able to help them build a sort of portfolio that will get them into the high school that they want to go to, um, hopefully. Um, and, you know, most of them don't. I mean, obviously, if you're not a test taker, you're not going to, to probably want to go to a test-driven high school sure. anyway, right? Um, so that's kind of the way that we've dealt with that interface. I mean, I think it is a little more problematic moving from high school, uh, from middle school to high school because you can't just go to the next state over and find that school. And there are a lot of colleges now that do not require the SAT or any other uh, uh, standardized test as admissions. So I think maybe this is just me looking at it from a middle school perspective and not from a high school perspective, but I think the options, are, or maybe it's a little easier to sell that uh, if you're, you're going from high school to, then to a, a middle school. Uh, um, high school to college and then from middle school to high school. Um. I'm not sure. Oh, I was going to. Go ahead. Oh, wait. Um, let me wait. I'm looking. I'm. All right. It's on my screen. There's different people popping up. So yeah. um, I'm in a very traditional school system. Um, it is a public school system that's um, uh, conservative um, in New Jersey. Uh, we have about 5,000 students. And there is. Um, it, it's one of the only school systems in New Jersey that is um, was court ordered desegregation 40 years ago, and um, we have a population of youngsters, um, some of whom are 
um, economically disadvantaged and some of whom are economically advantaged in rather extreme ways. So there's a great um, sort of gamut of um, uh, you know of, of, of wealth and, and, and need and, and so on uh, as well as racial um, diversity um, is uh, we're rich in that. Um, th there's an expectation in, in where I work that students in fact will take um, state assessments. Um, we are obligated to give state assessments. It's not a choice we get to make. And um, there are realtors who um, hope our students will all pass their state assessments because of property values. And I mean, these are very real things in, in New Jersey. Um, the alternative to high school for me is sort of born out of the tensions that um, happen when we send you know any number of students off to schools that colleges that um, the community finds you know active and a host of, of students who are barely getting out of high school and um, I've lobbied uh, a lot to say that we are not building an alternative high school but we're building an alternative to that whole process um, we do have external funders um, who happen to be very wealthy people in the town who uh, for, for reasons I'm not still not quite sure why are interested in um, this type of adventure and um, Say, so you know just so you get a sense I mean my world is very real around um, testing expectations in New Jersey and so on um, we are very public in that regard Say more about the distinction you're making about, uh, between alternative okay. high school and alternative process. I'm sorry, what? More about what you I, meant I'm between. Sure. You don't call your school an alternative high school, but it's an alternative to yeah. the process. Which process? The whole college the process or what? Yeah. Right. It's an alternative to the traditional concept of high school in which, okay. um, and, and let me just be specific, what I mean by traditional concept is this. Um, students are scheduled into very discrete courses. Um, we may run some interdisciplinary courses, but they're still nonetheless bounded experiences that have been determined um, by a curriculum being written. The student's voice in that is missing in the sense that even, and, and I'll say this, we, I work with wonderful teachers who will uh, attempt to negotiate curriculum with, with students and so on, but what happens inside that traditional setup is that everybody is still being channeled into, you know, algebra, um, calculus, um, U.S. history, American studies. Um, there is a belief that the best way to learn um, um, information is to have you know, very discrete disciplines. The alternative to high school doesn't uh, posit that knowledge happens as a result of studying discrete disciplines as the solo thing to do. Um, one, in fact, might study um, discrete discipline, um, such as we, we just heard with Monica, where, where, where the, the, the young man wanted to study, um, and I guess is interested in languages and Spanish and so on. Um, that choice for, in traditional schools is taken away. And um, we want to restore that so that, because we really believe students, you know, have a mind that they, they can make decisions. And I also deeply believe that teachers can help guide that. So that, that's sort of, it's an alternative to that one process that says, we've made the map and now you're going to walk it. Um, it's sort of um, like, um, you know, um, Bill Piner's idea of you, you, you know, you're making the road while walking, puree. It's sort of that that's sort of what what we're after in in the alternative to to that traditional system right. quick question about the um, standardized tests can parents opt out in your district or in your state yes and in fact as a parent I, I'm doing that um, I, I'm looking at that right now and researching it but I do know that um, certainly for religious reasons in New Jersey, uh, a parent can opt out. And I'm trying, I'm right now exploring what are some of the other reasons that um, parents can opt out uh, their child from the testing. And certainly when PARC arrives and we're testing nine times a year, um, you know, I, I, I would not want my child subjected to that. 
and, and Monica, um, um, this the same. Sorry to interrupt, but um, I know that uh, the lab um, learners uh, can can uh, move uh, in a GUI fashion between um, the the school district, right? Do they? How do they interface with with uh, examinations? Um, in that in that realm. In our in our district, um, it used to be you could opt out. And it would be negative points for the district, and now you can opt out, and it's not negative points for the district. Um, most kids in the lab that come to the lab, they come for one class, and so they're doing all the other classes. And um, but from the last three years, watching the kids, um, I feel that. That's kind of why I really wanted to call everyone together on the Hangout and say, let's, let's not just talk anymore, let's actually do something, because it's really tough watching these kids, and, and, and as we as adults end every sentence with, but they did okay on the test. I mean, that, that's like a raised eyebrow that completely screws everything up right there. And if we say, um, you know, it, it's hard to do all this other stuff because they're still taking the test, well then, that's, we're going to tackle it right there. And the thing that we're working on aggressively is um, a means to monitor growth that isn't a comparison game to other people. It's a, it's a monitoring of growth. It's a, a video. Um, so we're really seeing what's going on. It's a doing growth, but it's only compared to yourself, like personal best. And um, we're, what we're trying to do is like Rob, we're doing these detox booths where they go in and they video what they noticed, what they dreamed about, um, who they connected to, and what they actually did. And compiling enough of that, I mean, we've seen it last year where kids come in at the beginning of the year and they're staring at the wall. I don't know what I noticed. I noticed a fly on the wall. And by the end of the year, they, they won't shut up. And they're coming in every day and saying, I want to learn everything. I've got to just check this out. We're going to learn this. And they do. I mean, they can learn whatever they want. Thank you. If they want to, Chris, there's a really good, we have over 600 videos, of raw footage of kids last year, because that was our documentation. It needed to be legit. Christian's talking on one of them, and I'm saying, he just told me his dream, and I said, do you think you can do whatever you want? And he said, it was, it was very poignant, because he just, you could tell he was really thinking, and he goes, I can do whatever I want, as long as I want to do whatever I want. If I want to do what I want, I can do it. You know, and so... Then I said to him, the crazy adult that I am, I said, the doing part, that's the hard part. Or, or I don't remember what I said, but he said, the doing is fun. You know, and it's, mm. we just, we don't, we don't listen enough to know that they don't need to hear all our stories about how technology has changed and, and how this law is this way. And we just need to get out of the way and let them do amazing things. And so that's what we're planning to do. We're planning to document this as many people that, We'll, you know, get a little training. We're writing this book so people can know exactly what we're doing. Join us in this documentation, and we're going to say, this is bunk. We're not – the standardized test is great for people who want to take them, but we need to offer more choices. Anya Kamenet says that um, too many people are making career-based decisions with too little information. And Rob said earlier, there's so many options out there, and we're all experiencing them. We're not saying anyone is right. We're saying it's very eclectic even within a kid, you know, so let's not say he's a charter school kid or he's an innovation lab kid or he's an alternative high school kid. Let's say he's a kid and he's learning and he's living. Let him pick and choose the resources in his community and globally that will help him. Monica, can I ask you about the detox? Um, one of the issues I think you're already saying you say you have over 600 hours of tape um that's no, a lot of data hours. We've, you got like, we've got like 600 videos some of them Video. you know I'm sorry. 10 seconds now. i'm sorry it's just okay. but still you have a lot you have a lot of data are the students analyzing that data themselves like some self-analysis or like so what happens with that raw <laughs> data Everything we've done has been, we can't wait to decide if this is good or bad. We're going to experiment with it. We're just going to do it. We're going to be very transparent. We have everything out. Tell us what we did wrong, you know. Or, and so, honestly, as, a, as someone who has resigned themselves from a teaching mathematics, I learned more last year because I would spend my days videotaping the kids. I would spend my nights watching them 
because while I was videotaping, I was actually having conversations and into what they were doing. Watching that at night taught me how to listen. I noticed so much more from that. So I'm not saying, like this four-year plan, we're not saying everybody needs to go through four years. That was, that was a lot of me learning that um, I needed to notice more. Now this year what we're doing is they're, they're going in once a week and they will analyze it because they'll get like a, a fast forward of themselves and say and seeing if because often we don't know if we've grown or not um, mm -hmm. we've got a CSU professor doing it with us and a CSU a, a, a student teacher a master student teacher doing that with us and analyzing it as well the CSU professor is going to turn videos the plan is to turn the videos into an activity systems mapping the main question that we're asking is what is your experience with detox and we're hoping, and what I, I saw last year, is that the detox does improve self-directed learning. If it's let alone, you know, if it's, if it's back-ended with, well, they did detox, they did that, that innovation lab, and they did really well on the test too. I mean, you just kind of, you've run the, the mindset that is needed um, for any brilliance that, you know, really could happen. Mm -hmm. Amanda, what are you thinking? Um, I guess I'm, I'm thinking that one of the things that seems to maybe like bring us together or, or maybe I, just brings me together is uh, kind of moving into what is possible and, um, and also uh, in doing that taking ownership for the direction in which you choose, any of us choose to go. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, that's what I'm thinking in this moment. How about you? Me? <laughs> I wanted to mention that, that I'm moving to a new school, and the biggest reason I'm moving to a new school is because... Oh, I saw on your yeah. thing with the four spots. And with oh, all yeah, the four spots. The I wanted to mention and... those. But <laughs> even before that, I, they opened a computer room for me and said, you're going to be teaching poetry, and American literature, and you can basically do what you want. Um, and it's that, after these many years of teaching, it's that freedom that I long for also. So, you know, kids need it. We need it too. <laughs> but yeah, one of the first one of the first things I did um, was look around in the community, and I found um, I don't even know how to say her name, uh, Majora Carter, who has a several wonderful TED Talks where she talks about her dog going off to, into a, an area and then she worked with the city to make that into a park and she's done a lot of sustainable projects so I'm going to hook up with her s as, as quickly as we can and then there's a Rocking the Boat um, organization where kids build boats which is a really wonderful thing that they do um, and there's a poetry art community center called The Point that I hope to hook up with too. So yeah, getting out there in the community, I think I totally understand. <laughs> so that's one thing we've learned tonight. I'm wondering if because we are getting close on time, if we could go around and kind of talk about like what action steps out of all this just sort of meeting each other we can talk about. Is that possible or is that too fast or <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, really. Go ahead, Monica. Uh, you had a thought. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. He wants to know what we're doing about it. Um, I know Thomas <laughs> and I are meeting up in New York at a contact mm. conference in October, and hopefully, maybe some of the others can come. We we wanted Alex to try to come. Alex is a key player in this Match.com. You know, creating serendipity within your community. Um, his his little website that he has not little but um is it says what do you want to learn and you, you put that in and then he connects you to people in your community um, hmm. but anyway we want to go there um they're talking about social change and they're they're actually doing a bazaar it's a one-day shot incredible people there clay shirky um i'll miss all mark pesci um vanessa mimus um uh, douglas uh rushkoff and um they're, they're doing a bazaar at lunchtime, and they're, you have tables, and they're going to award prizes to who has the most innovative idea to bring a 
upon the biggest social change. And um, how how could you how could education if we would change education? I mean, that's now from re reading um, uh, Ivan. There's so much of our world is involved in education right now, and so much of our money is going towards it. But so much of that money is going towards paperwork that stands for mistrust. And so imagine if we spent the hours in the day differently, and we unleashed these kids. There's no way that can't be the biggest social change, you know. So anyway, that's one of our goals is we're writing up this book so that we things that are edible for people to join in. Um, go ahead, anybody else. What what this is spurring on for you? Um, my my goal this year is actually just to to uh, be more even more transparent. I mean, we, we hold a blog, so everything the kids are doing, um, everybody's aware of that, and the kids ha uh, have have blogs as well. But um, definitely to do some more mixed media, um, sharing is a big one for me. I think it's one of those things where if the stories are out there and being told, and you're your neighbor, um, and you're aware of them, um, then it, it, it kind of uh, loses the mystique of being other. Right, um, and that's that's I think one of the things that we all kind of grapple with a little bit, and that has to do with people constantly wondering, well, does it work? Because it's so foreign to their own personal um, experience. So as much as you know, not not for for any sort of salesmanship sort of game or anything like that, but rather just uh, so that people are aware that there's alternatives for them. You buy into so much without questioning it. It's just amazing. What's your plan? What's your action plan? Action. Action. What do you want to do this year? What are you, this do you have year. any goals? Sure. This year, you know, uh, well, I kind of want to just make sure that I can get out of high school and into a college where I can play soccer in a big division. But, um, I guess it would be a goal to figure out how I could do it without having to put up with all these classes, you know? And maybe just like them accepting me for like all the love and passion I have for the sport and me just wanting to play at a college level at a higher level with other people. And if I could just do that, maybe that would be even better. So, Christian, so Christian, what what position do you play? I play center mid, but my coach is What? So he has a goal that wouldn't normally take him to college, but because mm -hmm. of the soccer, he wants to go there. So we're we're talking about ways that he can do that and model that because he's one that feels responsible to share it. I mean, he knows we have it really good. You know, we have it really bad too, but we have it really good, and he wants to share it. So rather than just Sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and do it the way you're supposed to do it, you know. But he wants to make a difference and, and show that he can try to do it a different way, go to college a different way, if that's what he wants to do. And like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's, uh, it's hard to explain that. I, like, there's a different feeling that I can sense from playing in college and, like, playing with a school and like, I don't know, being like looked at, I don't know, just uh, sparks like happiness in people. Uh, cool. <laughs> Thanks it's for stopping. It's fun to play sports in college. It's awesome. And the, yeah, and like, yeah, I just, and it's more competitive and that's all I want, you know? Hmm. Get pushed. But it's it's made him learn video production, and he's like incredible at it now. It's made him he's an, an amazing writer, and he hated writing. He never wanted to read anything. I mean, he started to do things that we call really good things um, because those are natural things. If you love something, you want to share it, and all those things are sharing. You know, mm. read about it, write about it. Yeah, and like I was gonna say, like, um, like if you actually like would really could like just let, like every kid just like 
study for passion. Like, I think I would get curious enough about everything. Like, why does the, the ball curve when I hit it that I would actually get into math? Yeah, I would actually like get into stuff like that. But like, I don't know. Like right now, not. No, I don't like. But I used to like it when I was little. But like, if I had to like, I, I bet if I were to like figure out why I could hit the ball at this angle when it's impossible for the ball to go in, but it curved in. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Marianne, any last thoughts? Thank you, Christian. Yeah, I am finishing a plan for um, uh, funders. So, you know, it's it's a rather concrete plan about what um, sort of the purpose of the school will be, you know, the, the normal kinds of things you'd see in a school plan. Um, and I'm meeting tomorrow night with our school board um, they already have the draft, and they've taken a month to mull it over. And tomorrow night, we're going to um, do two things. We're going to engage in a conversation about the plan, and you know, I'll be getting some feedback from them. And then they're going to be doing um, something I'm really, really pleased by. They're going to begin um, John Silly Brown's book, A New Culture of Learning. I am trying um, to... Uh, use that text to help them begin to see that knowledge is rather unstable because th these are people who are, are fairly successful in terms of their career choice and they tend to be engineers and medical doctors attorneys and and so they they you know have made a living um, with the belief that knowledge is rather stable and so this whole new idea of or, or it's not really new but maybe it's new for many people that knowledge isn't stable um, you know, is is where I want the conversation to go because I, I think it's going to help us all to to um, be a bit more courageous. And so uh, that's what uh, 24 hours from right now I'll be in that meeting. And so so everybody should have good thoughts. We wish you night. luck. Yes. <laughs> <Great>. Thank you. <laughs> Amy. Yes. Any thoughts you have? Um, no, this is really exciting to see that there are people elsewhere doing the same kinds of things. Cool. <laughs> Amy's working on a section of the book on mentoring alongside. Mm. Um, we're either going to use some of the stuff that Marianne already wrote, or she's going to write some more on rhizomatic learning. Um, Rob has talked about doing detox booth with us. Thomas is going to like edit what we write and make it sound really smart and um uh, amanda and marianne both hopefully you know maybe some of their artwork will be in there um okay. it's it's just amazing to have this group of people and you know sometimes it doesn't even matter if we're talking about the same thing we're going to learn and that's how life is you know just getting together and having that conversation is the most incredible thing and just being ourselves when we're together Amy, I wanted to Thanks ask. Thanks for having us. I, 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 Amy, I wanted to ask if you were familiar with Pat Carini's work, um, the Prospect no. School. Look, Pat Carini at Prospect School. Um, and oh, oh, yes, yeah. Actually, I have a friend who told me about it a couple of weeks ago, who started a, uh, a, a charter school in the Bronx. Yeah, and so maybe. she had research Pat Carini. But she uses a lot. She uses the word alongside a lot and kind of unpacks it in interesting ways. So anyway, when I was Nick, looking through Nick your document, Askew. I thought of it. Nick yeah. Askew does soul biographies, and one of his videos is about mentoring alongside, and it's so amazing. So, so Monica, but yeah, I, I, I think we could do one of these conversations and just focus in on a word like detox and say, say what that word, means. Did you just say the word focus? Something like that. But anyway, sure, I'm just we saying. Can do that, Paul. We can do that, Paul. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure I won't be too focused. Don't worry. I'll, uh, I'll duct tape my arms to the chair, and we will focus, Paul. Okay. <laughs> Chris Sloan, you have any thoughts there? And then Thomas, you get the last thought. I. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I'm Good. wondering. Uh, first of all, I, I really like the the uh, emphasis on mentorship, you know, connecting with people in the community, and then also, you know, that the students are leading the learning. I like that. And, and I wonder about how 
uh, all of our students might be able to connect around those passions uh, because I you know I teach in a traditional school but I run my classroom kind of like Paul described I have a lot of freedom and a lot of the students uh, operate on their passions and so connecting these students around you know I have a lot of students for instance who like to uh, create video and and uh, that kind of thing even sports video like Christian talked about so connecting our various students around those passions seems like a worthwhile goal yeah. definitely yeah Thomas <laughs> if you want it you um, have last well, no, I guess, yeah it, it, <laughs> I think that uh, our connection is going to continue uh, to grow and catalyze and I'm coming off of a, a year of a design based project and um, and in a pretty major iteration and and with the inspiration of, of people like Rob Marianne and uh, Monica and I'm also working on the roots of a, a rural innovation lab and so I think that uh, within a year's time um, as I work with the community here and, and actually watch them and listen more which is something that I've learned greatly from um, we're going to see more and more possibilities with with this type of um, uh, you know reality coming coming online in communities and uh, and school is not for um, I I think a majority of uh, of what we call uh, students or young people or even old um, and certainly when you're in subaltern communities with economic issues rural or, or urban or other. Um, I think that this presents something that's very, very real uh, for uh, for learning in the U.S. Uh, and and much further. And so I'm, I'm I'm just very excited. Cool. Well, we will continue. I'd like to add that Go ahead, um, Go ahead. for people who want to try to do this within a even a restricted, no matter what your constraints are. Mm -hmm. From our experience, um, the detox is the Notice Dream Connect do. And if, if you just focused on noticing, Ellen Langer wrote a book called Mindfulness. If you just took that one thing and challenged your kids to notice something unlikely once a week, once a day, um, that would change everything because so much of what education is about is about right now is not is mindless. Um, so, you know, we talk Google 20% and we talk how do we do that because the kids don't know what to do. Just encourage them to notice something unlikely. You know, just that simple thing I think would make a huge change. Well, thank you, Monica, and thank you, everybody. Oh, uh, we want. Yeah. Go ahead. Enjoy your new job. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. definitely. I'll work on thank it. Thank you yeah. very much. Oh. Thanks for coming, um, guys. Sure. Thank you. I want to say that everyone. this video will be up on edtechtalk.com which is a channel of the World Bridges Network. We want to thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier for hooking all that up. Uh, you can also find it at teachersteachingteachers.org. There'll be video up and audio probably tomorrow. So thank you all. Good night. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Night, everyone. Night. 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 Yeah.